If you've recently found out that your men pen has diabetes, or maybe you found out a while back, or maybe you're just curious about the topic at all, well, today's video we're going to be talking just about that topic, men pen and diabetes. We're going to talk about what is diabetes, what are some warning signs that you can look for in your men pen, um, then we're going to talk about how your vet's going to diagnose that exactly, and then finally we're going to kind of talk about some of the cost and how it's just, you know, daily life's going to change for you. Um, having a men pen with diabetes. Hey guys, my name is Nate. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time with us, welcome. Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, go and hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. Also, all the different products that I recommend, I always put them down in the description below. So if you're looking for a recommendation for uh, your men pen, I try to keep that list up to date and add to it as I come across new items, uh, then definitely check that out down below. Um, and there'll be links to all the different things as well that I talk about in this video. Okay, so first up, we're gonna be talking about what is diabetes. So diabetes in dogs is kind of similar to diabetes in people. So if you know somebody with diabetes, they're kind of similar. Um, so diabetes, there's really two different types of diabetes. You basically have diabetes where the dog's body is rejecting insulin, and then you have it where they are resisting insulin. And so if they're rejecting insulin, they're pretty much, there's some type of damage with the men pen's pancreas or something that is rejecting the insulin that they need. And so therefore that's why, you know, we'll talk about it later, why you're going to have to provide them that insulin through, you know, uh, insulin injections daily. The other kind is less common actually, and that's where they are producing some insulin, but it's the body, the dog's body is kind of resisting it at the same time, so you're not able to fully use that. And like I so said, that's a lot less common than the first type, but it's kind of treated the same way. So nonetheless, when you find out that your dog may have diabetes, there are some warning signs that are going to be kind of cropping up. Uh, so the, some of the ones that you're going to be one on the lookout for is uh, increased urination, and this is going to kind of be tied with increased, uh, you know, thirstiness, right? They're going to be wanting to drink out of the water bowl, and you'll notice it. You'll notice that they it will increase substantially. Um, so not a lot of people know, and honestly, it was a very difficult time to do this video, and I've kind of resisted doing this video for a little bit because of a stigma with, like, a dog with diabetes. But my dog Blitz, he's been on this channel quite a bit. Uh, he's actually was diagnosed with diabetes about... I'd say about a year ago now. So we've been living with him with diabetes for a year. Um, he's doing okay for, you know, for, for the situation. You know, he's a little bit older dog as well. Um, and so what we noticed with him was starting partly with drinking the water, but it was the increased urination where he would just start having accidents and they weren't like he was trying to mark something in the house. It would just all of a sudden just come on and he would start just having an accident and he would just like take off running and it would just be like a line down the hallway or whatever uh it's just you know not like him at all um and then once we saw that sign it kind of started to go with seeing that the water bowl he would just be there drinking and drinking and drinking and that's because they're trying to fulfill you know that that lack of sugar so it's just they're trying to do something to fill that right and then the third thing that you're going to notice is their appetite their appetite is going to increase and they're going to become almost almost unstable at times when they're going to want to eat and this can affect a lot of things like blitz you know he's he's had his ups and downs you know throughout his life but he's never been a truly just wanting to try to take all of my kids you know food and, you know all the table food and stuff and and even dogs that are well trained you may start to notice that they just all of a sudden are overcome by this um because they're trying to get sugars and fats and everything that they're not getting through their normal feeding that, that they've been eating all their life, the food. So you may see them start to really approach that and, and become not, not aggressive. I mean, Blitz never became aggressive during this time, but just wanting to kind of break the rules a little bit more or trying to just be you know hungry all the time. So they're scratching at their bowl more, they're scratching to get their food or their whatever it may be. So those are your three things. Look out for that increased, you know, um, drinking of water, that increased urination from that, and then also that increased appetite. Okay, so these are some of the signs that you notice. The next thing you're going to want to do is talk to your vet. Now, like I like to say in a lot of my videos, I am not a vet in any kind, so make sure all these things we're talking about today that you do go talk to your local veterinarian. 
So once we found this out with Blitz, we took him to the vet. We actually didn't know that it was diabetes at the time. We just knew that he was not acting like himself. He was starting to have accidents in the house more and more. Uh, and even when he wasn't having accidents, he was constantly drinking and then wanting to go outside drinking, wanting to go outside. I mean, we're talking like I was taking a puppy all over again and like taking them outside every half hour. So we took him to the vet and talked to the vet and they said, hey, you know, what we need to do is it sounds like he has diabetes, you know, and I'll be honest. And if you have a dog with diabetes, I felt terrible when I found this out. Like I was very upset. I felt like we, you know, I was wrong. And so I want to talk to the people out there that have felt the same way. And it's, you know, this isn't your fault. Sure, there's things that maybe contribute to it, or maybe they got certain foods, or maybe they were a little bit overweight, but don't don't blame yourself in that fashion. Um, there's too much blame in the world in general, you know, around other things. So don't don't be so hard on yourself. Okay, off of that tangent here. So, but once you're at the vet, they're gonna want to do what's called a glucose curve, and pretty much what that is is they need to measure, you know, what the glucose levels are of your men pin. Now, there's some normal levels um, that your men pin can be within, but the main thing is they're gonna measure them, and basically, it, it's a. This is the most expensive part of the process. I would say like all at once because this is something that's going to take uh, multiple times and multiple trips. And by that, what I'm saying is they have to take blood, they have to test it. So it's like a you drop them off and it's like a full day, right? It's like an eight hour day. And they test their blood, test their glucose levels, and then they measure them and then they start to look and they will start pretty much measuring it each hour. And what they're looking for is they're going to start giving them some type of insulin um, and then they're going to see if, you know, it starts to adjust or not. Well, once that happens the first time, insulin is one of those things you can't really just like, you don't just give them like four units and then keep adding to it. You, know, you can only give them a little bit. So they send them home and at that point, they're pretty much going to tell you, hey, for the next week, you're going to give them, you know, four units of insulin. And you're going to do that, you know, every day, twice a day. And you're going to and then come back the next week and they're going to test them again. And then after a while, they're going to get to the point where they're going to figure out what level of insulin that they need. And at that point, they can really say, okay, this is what type of it, uh, level they're going to need. And you know, you're, they'll lay out everything they're going to do. But until you get to that point, it could take one to two curves. You know, Blitz actually took quite a bit. It took, you know, five or six. Well, unfortunately, these are all visits that you need to be ready to pay for. Um, so definitely talk with your vet up front and kind of know, hey, how long is this going to take? And what's this kind of total cost we're going to be looking at? Okay, so let's move on to kind of talk about some of the costs of having a min pin with diabetes. Now, I kind of alluded to some of the costs with the glucose curves a minute ago, but definitely one of the number one costs you're gonna come up front is those glucose curves. Now, like anything, vet you know, prices are gonna vary across the region, but on average, you're looking about between 100 to $125 per glucose curve. So if they had to take two, obviously 250, and then you'll kind of go up from there. Um, so now once this is established, a glucose curve normally is not a, not a regular thing as far as it's not gonna be every month. It's usually, most vets recommend about once a year or as you see uh, for them to be regulated. Also, additionally, some people, you can actually buy your own uh, glucometer, you know, just online, and I'll link one down below. Um, and pretty much you can test your dog yourself, and you can actually do the little sample and kind of get a reading on them and know if, hey, it's starting to rise or um, kind of adjust from what it should be, the normal range, then you can kind of take them back into the vet and talk to them there. That's another option as well. Um, another cost that you're going to be looking at is, is actually with their diet. So most vets are going to recommend some type of, there's not really a diabetes food per se, but like Blitz is on what's called multi-benefit, uh, you know, science diet, um, and it's actually a vet prescribed um, dog food. Now we buy it on uh, Chewy.com, uh, so I'll link down below. Like I said, you have to have a prescription to actually get it, but I'll link it down below. Um, and hey, let me know in the comments if you have a different uh, dog food that I recommend by your vet if you have one with diabetes. The next thing you're going to be looking at is, is the insulin needles and then the actual insulin. So the insulin is, you know, also once you get to the reoccurring cost, definitely the most expensive part it can be. Um, right now we use the Vetsulin and we once again get that off of Chewy.com and it's $58 a, a bottle at the time of this recording. Uh, this was cheaper than going through our local vet that was upwards to $80 per bottle. 
Um, and like I said, depending on how many units that your min pin needs is going to really d dictate how long that's going to last. Um, so it could last up to you know a month or it could last just a couple of weeks if they have to take a lot more insulin. And then finally, you're going to be having the insulin needles. Now these, once again, you can actually get a prescription for, but you can actually buy these um, just off of Amazon where we found ours that were actually cheaper than getting them through, uh, through a prescription source. And so I'll link those down below as well. So I think it's about 30 bucks and it gets you about 100 needles, which obviously you, you do it twice a day. I mean, obviously it's going to last you, you know, almost two months, right about 50 days. So those are the main costs you're going to be dealing with uh, on the regular when it comes to having a men pin with uh, diabetes. Okay, so kind of the most important part and what everyone's kind of been looking at is, you know, how do you live with a men pin with diabetes? Well, in one sense, you don't do a whole lot different. So the big thing you're going to be adjusting are three things. You're going to be adjusting their diet. You're going to be adjusting, obviously giving them insulin, you know, medication twice a day. And then you need to make sure you look at their exercise. So when it comes to diet, you need to really make sure that you are very strict on what they're eating. So make sure that they're on the prescribed diet from their um, vet because the whole point here is, is you have to give their insulin injections right along with their meal times twice a day, right? So pick a time 12 hours apart. So if you like to get up super early, then know you're going to be doing it, you know, at five o'clock. So if you don't get home from work until a little bit later, you probably need to adjust that as well or have someone kind of help you. But the point is, is they eat first, right? And it kind of is going to raise their levels and then they're going to get that insulin injection that's going to kind of balance them out. If they don't have enough food or they have too much insulin, then they're going to go into what's called a state of hypoglycemia, right? And that's where they're going to start you know, being incoherent um, and they're going to, you know, basically they don't have enough blood sugar, right? And at that point, if that does happen, I do want to say make sure you get them some sugar immediately. So, you know, give them some peanut butter, get them some corn syrup, uh, anything like that that's kind of has high sugars that can quickly digest and it can help them and immediately call your vet as well. But that's kind of, you need to make sure that that happens, that no longer are they free feeding, no longer do you try to let them have a bunch of other foods on the side, you kind of need to keep them strict with it twice a day. And like I said, along with, you know, they eat and then within 15 minutes, they have that insulin injection. And then also living with the men pin, you need to look at their exercise. So it is good for them to have exercise, but you need to know a couple things. One, when the, it is getting close to the time for them to eat and get insulin shots again, their insulin, I mean, it is wearing off, right? That's the whole point. That's why they get it twice a day. So you don't really want to exercise them very heavily, really ever while they're on diabetes. You want to have them do moderate exercise at this point, but you also don't want to do it right up to that point where they're not very regulated. So the best time to exercise them is going to be more of a midday exercise if you can, or after they've had that evening meal, kind of, you know, give them about a half hour or so for everything to take. And at that point, then you can go do the normal exercise routine with them, take them on a walk or whatever it may be. Um, so if you have a men pin with diabetes, I'd like to hear in the comments below if you have any tips and tricks for anyone else that is, uh, has a dog that has gotten uh, diabetes. So let us know down in the comments below. Once again, if you've had value from this video, make sure to hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button. And if you're looking for some other hacks about a min pin we just did a video recently all about min pin hacks so I'll link that right over here and then right down here I will you know YouTube always recommends you something down here so I'll see you in one of these videos coming up next